What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to cover something new in terms of design when we're talking about the visual aspect of the GPU from Sapphire and right here we have the Sapphire Radeon RX 7700 XT Pure and with the pure white design it does have a dash of red and a bit of a grayish lines but that's only the design, right? We're going to go through the design features, synthetic benchmarks and a bit of a gaming. Unfortunately I couldn't cover 26 games in this short period so I'm going to leave that for another video later on during this month most likely. So yeah let's start with the design as I mentioned first we're gonna go through that and then the rest. So we have a quite nice all white design with the Sephir logo right here and having some red plastic cover that lights up in red. So we have two 8-pin connectors here. We have the LED switch uh, at the back uh, which could mean that you could switch it off entirely. So that's quite all right because if you don't want uh, if you want to go with complete white build uh, you can switch off the uh, LEDs and that's quite uh, understandable. We have Pure white backplate, quite solid because it keeps the GPU straight. You have a slight uh, sag but nothing to worry about and because of that you get an anti-sag bracket inside the box as well to mount it uh, beneath it and to hold the GPU. Three fans that are somewhat similar to the Pulse design which is quite cool. And that's it when we're talking about the visual aspects. When we're talking about some connectivity parts, we have two display ports and two HDMI ports, a minimum 700 watts of power supply or higher, of course. Then we have 54 compute units, uh, 3456 uh, stream processors, 54 RT accelerators and 108 AI accelerators, 12 GB GDDR6. It supports AMD FSR 3.0, AMD Hyper RX, OBS Studio, AMD Smart Technology and noise suppression. When we compare 7700 XT to 6700 XT, we have 48 megabytes second generation AMD Infinity cache, while the 6700 XT has 128 megabytes first uh, generation. Memory system is 18 gigabits as already stated, but with the 6700 XT we have 16 gigabits per second 192 bit. Effective memory bandwidth, 7700 XT has 1995.3 while the 6700 XT has 1278 and the effective memory bandwidth comparison 156% compared to the uh, 67 XT. Now checking out uh, and comparing uh, 77 XT to 4060 Ti, this one has 12 gigabytes, which is quite all right. When we take into consideration 7900 XTX, 7900 XT, then we have 7800 XT, 7700 XT and 7600 XT. And they all kind of go from the top of the line to the bottom from 24 gigabytes to 8 gigabytes. And it's quite nicely arranged actually comparing to Nvidia what they did. So memory speeds in those comparison is the same 18 gigabytes per second. Memory interface 192 compared to 128 bit. Memory bandwidth 432 compared to 288. And then uh, we have DisplayPort 2.1 and UHBR 13.5 while the DisplayPort is 1.4A on 4060Ti and maximum DP bandwidth 54 gigabits per second compared to 32.4 gigabits per second. Now for the build inside, we have 14 phase digital power design with high performance conductive polymer aluminum capacitors. It also has input power fuse protection and high TG PCB with two ounce copper. For the fans, we have three of those which are angular velocity hybrid fans with two ball bearing. Five optimized composite heat pipes, uh, uh, as already stated in the box you get an L-shaped graphic card supporter which is kind of adjustable with uh, the hinge that can be moved forward and backward and the red accent LED with hardware switch so basically you can't change the light you can only switch it off. Sapphire will also release Nitro Plus, we have the Pure right here and the Pulse models where you can see the Pure model is straight in the middle when we take uh, into consideration the boost clock, the boost clock for the pure one is uh, 2584 MHz, the pulse is 2544 and the Nitro Plus is 2599. 
uh, game clock uh, 2276 for the nitro plus 2226 for the pure and 2171 for the pulse model everything else is uh, basically almost the same except for the form factor the nitro plus is a uh, three slot while the pure and pulse are 2.5 slot and we have the 3x cooling on the nitro plus and the pure one while the pulse one is dual x all three use two 8 pin pci express uh, connection for the power and only the nitro plus has dual UEFI with software switch, addressable RGB light bar, Nitro Glow ARGB, Fan Quick Connect and Fan Health Check, while also assistive system fan control. The TDP ranges. So a Pulse goes up to 230, the Pure goes up to 240 and the Nitro Plus goes up to 252 watts. Now for the benchmarks, uh, of course I started with AIDA 64 Extreme Edition, 30 minutes test, paired up with 7900X3D, CPU went up to 91 degrees Celsius, clock speed 4750 MHz on the processor, GPU went up to 48 degrees Celsius, which is outstanding because I didn't expect such low thermals. Then we go to Indigo Benchmark, uh, Bedroom 11.08 uh, points, while the Supercar 28.510. Uh, then we go to Uni Engine 1080p, uh, 45 degrees Celsius, again shocking temperatures, FPS 221.4, score was 5577, uh, minimum FPS 79.6, while the maximum was 422.8. 3D Mark times by Extreme in 4K, we got score 7966, GPU score was 7868, times by GPU score was 17,035, while the overall score was 16,328. Then we go to Firestrike, uh, 56 uh, degrees Celsius, so we get some more heat up on the GPU, but still quite normal. The score was 32,792, GPU score was 39,750, physics score was 37,392 and the combined score was 13,131. So I used Tech Power Up GPU Z uh, to check out the board power draw, GPU temp on the hotspot, GPU temperature on the uh, core, GPU clock and everything else. And all of these are at the maximum that I'm going to mention, but you can see in the pictures everything else. So 256 watts uh, board power draw, 86 degrees Celsius uh, GPU temperature on the hotspot, 58 degrees Celsius uh, core GPU temperature. 2669 MHz GPU clock and GPU memory 2238. I do have to mention one thing, during the synthetic benchmarks and now the gaming benchmarks that I'm going to show you, there was literally no coil wine. So I didn't have no issues with that and it was dead silent when we're talking about that. The cooling was actually quite surprising and uh, I'm quite uh, amazed that comparing to the new generation, but after all, we can't compare the same thing as the NVIDIA GPUs and the Radeon cards, but uh, three fans, quite slim, two and a half uh, slot thickness, and it keeps the thermals at 57, I would say, on average, but if we take into consideration, like, uh, the gaming part, it goes up to 62 degrees, and it all depends on the GPU usage and how the game acts with this GPU and everything else. So let's go into gaming. It's going to be quite interesting because I didn't expect uh, this kind of results and um, since I already have benchmarks with 7900X3D paired up with RTX 4080, this is definitely going to be interesting. Comparing 4080 and 7700XT in uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, in 1080p we have average of 136 FPS for the 4080, while the 7700XT 115. 1440p we have 91 on average for 4080 and 87 on average for 77XT. PUBG 4080 in 1080p we have 259 average and 197 in 1440p, while on 7700XT 1080p 134 average and 59 on 1440p. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order uh, 7700XT has on 1080p average of 143, 1440p 101 on average. RTX 4080 has 143 on 1080p, but on 1440p has again 143. Now Assassin's Creed Valhalla is something else. 1080p with 7700XT uh, average was 137, while the 4080 was 130. And then if we go to 1440p, 
the average for 7700 XT was 103, while for the 4080 was 131. Hogwarts Legacy 7700 XT, we have 146 on average in 1080p for 7700 XT and uh, 1440p we have 124. Of course I have all of this recorded, so I did use the new uh, GPU drivers, the Adrenaline 2320-0105 and I think this GPU does uh, outstandingly well when we're talking about games on the AMD platform. Comparing it to PUBG where RTX 4080 scores like almost above 200 FPS in 1080p and uh, 4040p is a bit different story, but taking into consideration that where we have 100 FPS of difference and then we go to Jedi Fallen Order and then we go to the other parts, it's uh, something else. But uh, synthetic benchmarks really do show quite uh, nice scores and I do have to say it kind of goes into that uh, perfect segment for 1440p gaming because everything I did was on ultra details and if you kind of fiddle around depending on the game and what kind of FPS you get it could be quite interesting for you as well. But we do have to wait for the prices to see what we can expect comparing the prices to the performance and everything else. The cooling is outstanding and I do have to say on the Sapphire RX 7700 XT Pure 58 on average is quite great and the design is uh, immaculate. Now I'm going specifically on the design because this one looks cool. Talking about the performance, um, as already stated, I mean it's quite solid and uh, I paired it up with 7900X3D just because I wanted to give this GPU that extra headroom so it doesn't bottleneck uh, with uh, some sort of a weaker processor. Um, I think it could be a good pair with 76 or 7700X, but uh, I didn't test that out and I didn't have the time to actually uh, run it through, but I think 7700X would be a perfect match with this card. Regarding that, I really wanted to give it, as I already stated, more room to push it to the limits and see what it can uh, give us. Uh, that will be all for today, guys. A bit uh, intro introduction, review, benchmark, synthetic, gaming, uh, overview of the card and all the other details, which uh, I will definitely cover more in that uh, gaming video, which will give you more insights when the GPU goes live and if there are some updates on the drivers and everything else because this was done all pre-release and had to be prepared for today. So uh, it's all somewhere there. We'll check that out later on and definitely give you more heads up on that part. So guys, that will be all for today. If I find the link directly for this GPU and if you like it and you think it's suitable for you to pair it up with your processor, uh, I'll put it in the description below. And finally, if you like uh, this type of content as well as the other, don't forget to subscribe if you already didn't, hit the like button and click the notification bell for future ones. Thank you for watching. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.